uh, recently in our music class, and now we're we're gonna travel to one of the countries in the peninsular Southeast Asia, and that is the Philippines. Uh, please continue, Professor. Okay. So, which do you think? Oh, that's the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So we we take pride of the many uh, beaches, not the other beaches, the beaches of the Philippines. And uh, these are some of the country, Southeast Asian countries that we have studied and we will study along with Indonesia. Please proceed. This one yet? Yeah. Okay. So is everybody ready for takeoff? Please say yes. Yes. Or no. If yes. You Okay. No, the coronavirus. I, no, I oh. want to go to Philippines. So this is, don't worry, Matt. This is a virtual trip to the Philippines. <laughs> so we are safe. Yeah, so fasten your seatbelt and let's travel to the Pearl of the Orient Seas, the Philippines. So that's the moniker of the Philippines. They call it the Pearl of the Orient Seas. And uh, the tagline of the Philippine Tourism uh, department is it's more fun in the Philippines so if you want to travel and experience the Philippines and how fun it is to be in the Philippines please do so after the coronavirus outbreak <laughs> okay so let's talk about the the geography of the Philippines so the Philippines is located in the Western Pacific and it's also included in the Pacific Ring of Fire that's the reason why there are uh, 50 active volcanoes in the Philippines. So in the north, uh, it's near Taiwan. That's what I always say. You take a flight, it's just two hours, Philippines mm. to Taiwan. And then in the west, we have here the South China Sea, as you can see. In the east, the Philippine Sea. And in the south, we have the Celebes Sea, which separates Philippines from Indonesia. And then uh, we also have here uh, other countries such as Malaysia and Brunei. Please continue, Professor. So uh, as regards the national symbols of the Philippines, we have here the Philippine flag. What colors do you see? Red. Red. What else? Blue. Blue. Yellow. What else? Yellow and white. Uh, I, I, honestly, I am a I'm a color blind. So I, I, I'm, I've been suffering oh. from this disease since I am uh, a, a, a little kid. Okay. But I know that the colors of the Philippine flag are blue, which represents uh, peace, and then red, which represents courage. We have here white, which represents purity. And then we have the three stars. The three stars inside the triangle represent the three main islands of the Philippines. We have Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. So those are the three big islands of the country. And then the sun in the middle consists of the eight consists of eight rays. So these are all the provinces that revolted against the Spanish regime during the the Spanish Filipino War. Hmm. This is the history behind the flag of the Philippines. So let's talk about some facts. Facts about the Philippines. We have uh, the official name of the Philippines in Tagalog, uh, the national language is Republika ng Pilipinas, Republic of the Philippines. The capital city is Manila. It's also the most populous city, not only in Southeast Asia, but in the world. The form of government is republic, a presidential form of government, and our president currently is the very famous, uh, they, call it, they call him Hitler-like, oh. uh, Rodrigo Duterte. And then the population of the Philippines as of 2018 is 106.7 million. So that's how populous, densely populated the Philippines is. And then the main religion, is 80% of the Filipinos are, is Roman Catholic or they follow Roman Catholicism. And that's because of the influence of the Spanish, the, the Spaniards, I mean. And then we also have uh, people who are Muslims, Islam, Buddhists, uh, mainly the Filipino Chinese. 
we have a a big population as well of uh, Filipino Chinese or Chinese Im Chinese Filipinos we call them Chinois and then other Christian religions Protestants those are the ones that the Americans brought to the Philippines when they occupied the Philippines and then the official languages we have two based on our constitution we have Tagalog based Filipino and English uh, the main rivers are Cagayan River or Rio Grande de Cagayan, the Pasig River, which is located in Manila, and Mindanao River in Mindanao. And the currency is called Philippine Peso, similar with the Mexican Peso. Thank you. Please don't sleep. <laughs> yeah, I'll jam right now. Hold on. I don't sleep, JP. If you have questions, just uh, say it. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Oh. And later, please uh, turn on your mic because I'll be teaching you some of the common Tagalog expressions that we also teach to our students at NIU. Okay, so this is a brief... Uh, Mm, historical time uh, I mean a historical timeline of the Philippines uh, it started with the for the people coming from the from mainland Asia going to the Philippines to the archipelago and then AD 900 uh, the Chinese established coastal trading posts over the next 300 years that's why we have uh, a long history of connection with the Chinese and as I've said the first uh, Chinese uh, first Chinatown in the world is in the Philippines mm. and then 1521 to 1898 that's, that's like 333 years we were colonized by the Spaniards so that's the Spanish colonization and you can see the influence of the Spaniards when you go to the Philippines uh, when you see the churches and even the language is heavily influenced by Spanish Spanish June 12, 1898, this is the Philippine independence from Spain. And this is what we celebrate uh, because there are three countries that colonized the Philippines. We celebrate the, 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 our independence from the country that took over the Philippines the longest, and that is our independence from Spain, June 12, 1898. 1898 to 1946 is the American occupation. So that's the time that the Philippines is under the... Hollywood, American occupation, and then 1941 to 1945, uh, that's the time when the Americans are still there and that this is the time of the World War II, uh, when World War II broke out, so we were invaded by the Japanese as well, and we had a pretty rough history uh, with the Japanese, but they are paying the, they, they are, uh, how will I say, making up to what they did by sponsoring a lot of projects uh, in the Philippines. And then July 4, 1946, finally, uh, the United States declared the Philippines as an independent country. But this is, we don't celebrate July 4, 1946 as our uh, day mm -hmm. of independence. And then 1972 to 1981, this is a uh, imposition of martial law. Uh, one of the presidents of the Philippines, uh, his name is Ferdinand Marcos, was very famous because of his imposition of martial law during these years. Uh, that was during the Vietnam War? Yeah, that was during the Vietnam War as well. That's why we have a lot of, uh, of Vietnamese refugees coming, yeah, refugees yeah. coming from Vietnam as well. So they, they have, uh, because the, the United States had a military base in our country before uh, and uh, what the United States did was they they brought a lot of Vietnamese refugees to the Philippines and uh, actually my supervisor uh, Professor Crail at NIU she's the Tagalog supervisor she used to be uh, a language an English language teacher for these Vietnamese refugees and that's where she met her husband who was then a Fulbright scholar uh, based in the Philippines. Uh, okay, so now I'll be teaching you 
uh, some Tagalog phrases and expressions uh, and the culture that goes that go with this expression. So can we all say, can you turn on your mic? Your is it okay? Hello, hello. Okay, can you turn on your microphone? Yeah, magani. You can you can follow. Uh, you say can we all say kumusta ka? Kumusta ka? Kumusta ka? Can we all say kumusta ka? Kumusta ka? Kumusta ka? Kumusta ka? Of kumusta ka? How are you? Okay. Uh, can you proceed? Okay. Kumusta ka? is it's actually a uh, it actually came from the Spanish phrase, como esta? I knew it. Which, is, uh, which means, how are you? So when Filipinos uh, uh, ask about what happened during the day, they will say, or they will ask, como esta ka? Mm -hmm. And that means, how are you? Hmm. Sounded similar. With, with Spanish, right, Jordan? Yeah. Okay, that's how are you? Kumusta ka? Kumusta ka, uh, Jordan? Yeah. Kumusta ka? How are you? Did you oh. say in Tagalog, mabuti po? Madupi? Mad can, well, can you say, mabuti po? Mabuti po. Okay, that means I am good in English. Okay. So when someone says, kumusta ka? You say, mabuti po, that's good, or... You can say okay lang, okay lang uh, means I'm okay. Or you can also say buhay pa. Buhay pa means I'm still alive. Buhay pa, I'm still alive. Okay. Uh, professor. Okay. So this is, uh, as I've said, the influence of the uh, Spaniards to the Philippines. And uh, one, of, one of them is through the language and the architecture of the Philippines, like there are a lot of Spanish colonial churches in the Philippines. Even the oldest ones are, are in the world are there in the Philippines. Mm. Thank you. The next phrase is, can we all say mabuhay? Mabuhay. 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 It's not mabuhay, it's mabuhay. Ah. Hi. Mabuhay. The beauty with Tagalog is the sound of the vowels do not change. So it's consistent anywhere you place it in the word. And like in English, it can be cat, it can be uh, ma met, but in Tagalog, it's just consistent and the same. Mabuhay. So what's the meaning of mabuhay? Anyone? Anyone? Any guess? Okay, that means, okay. Long live. Mabuhay. So long live is mabuhay. Mabuhay. So that's also one uh, common expression in the Philippines, especially when there are tourists. We all say mabuhay, and that means long live. Okay. So what's the culture behind this expression? Uh, can we go to the next slide, Professor? Okay. Say, say the Filipinos are Very healthy. Uh, they say the Filipinos have uh, a vibrant culture and uh, one of the happiest people in the world. I don't know if that is still uh, true at present, but uh, we have a lot of uh, festivals in the Philippines. Like we have festivals for corn, we have festivals for whatever plant you can you can mention, we have those festivals. And the picture on the left side, if you're facing the screen, is a festival called Sinulog Festival and it celebrates uh, the infant Jesus. This is a religious festival brought about brought by the Spaniards. So this is an Spanish influence uh, festival. And then the right side, Mabuhay, because even if the Philippines is unfortunately uh, is a disaster risk country because we experience uh, a minimum of 12 typhoons a year, earthquakes, mm. volcanic eruptions, but they say Filipinos are resilient, that whatever happens, they still manage to rise up from, from these circumstances. So that's mabuhay long live. Mm. Life continues even if it's hard. Okay, next. Okay, we have kumain ka na ba? Can we all say kumain ka na ba? 
Kumain, kumain ka na ba? Kumain ka na ba? Kumain, kumain ka na ba? So, uh, in Tagalog, if it's a marked language, marked, so we mark the language with words. And if you see the ba here at the end, ba, that means that's a question. If there's a ba in the sentence in Tagalog, that means that's a question. And kumain ka na ba means? Anyone? Have you eaten? Yeah. That means have you eaten. Oh, bad timing. <laughs> that means have you eaten? And that's kumain ka na ba? Hindi ka na ba? So you say, oh, oh, hindi. Oh, oh is yes. Hindi, like hindi in India is no. no. So if I will ask you, Chushen, kumain ka na ba? Hindi. Okay. Matt, kumain ka na ba? Hindi. Hindi. Very good. Naisal, kumain ka na ba? Hindi. Hindi. Very good. Professor Chamni, kumain ka na ba? Hindi. Bunga, kumain ka na ba? Hindi. Hindi pa. Uh, Jordan, kumain ka na ba? Hindi. Hindi rin. Xiao Meng, kumain ka na ba? <laughs> She's typing. Tony, kumain ka na ba? I had a flushing. <laughs> Gianna, kumain ka na ba? Then, okay. Oo o hindi? Oo is yes, hindi is no. Rob Roberto, kumain ka na ba? Hindi. <laughs> we all need to eat breakfast. Okay. Yeah, because we have a, an early class. So, ako, if you will ask me, kumain na ba ako? Have I eaten? Uh, no, I haven't yet eaten. Okay. So, kumain ka na ba? Kain means eat. Okay, next. Oh. So, these are some of the famous dishes from the Philippines. So we are famous because of the Filipino adobo. So adobo is a, a way of cooking meat because during the Spanish period, there are no refrigerators yet. There were no refrigerators yet. So what Filipinos do is they marinate the, the meat with soy sauce and, and vinegar. When food has vinegar, it, it lasts long. So it's a mix of vinegar, soy sauce, some other spices like uh, laurel leaf and, uh, and uh, uh, peppercorns. And then you put chicken or pork. So that's chicken adobo or pork adobo. We also have like the babi guling in, uh, in Bali. Bunga, is that correct? Uh, yeah. The babi guling, or we call it lechon. Lechon is a roasted pig. And if there are cele big celebrations in the Philippines like weddings, uh, we have, we prepare lechon. It's called the same thing in Puerto Rico, too. Oh, it's also lechon. Mm. Okay. It's also, yeah, it's also lechon. It's Spanish influence, I, I believe so. It's, it's, it's my favorite thing. It's very yeah, it's, it's delicious, like that skin. Mine, too. Oh. It's sinful, but it's delicious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you have to check your blood pressure after eating it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next. Uh, this is a famous dessert. We call it halo-halo. Halo-halo in Tagalog means mix-mix because you basically mix all the ingredients before you eat it, eat the, the dessert. It consists of uh, beans, sweetened beans, uh, ube. Ube is purple yam. Ice cream on top, egg custard, uh, coco jelly, uh, and, uh, and shaved ice. So it's a, it's a dessert. And Filipinos love this because in the Philippines, it's summer all year long. And I saw an umbrella. Yeah, and then the umbrella is for uh, presentation purposes. <laughs> okay, and uh, we also have our uh, version of McDonald's. It's called Jollibee. Have you, we have one in Evanston, I guess. Yes. Jolly Bee. Yeah. Who already tried eating at Jolly Bee? There's a Jolly Bee here in Chicago land. Hmm. This is our uh, version of McDonald's. So it's a fast food chain and it's growing pretty much. Uh, it's growing faster uh, because of the, because it, it it's like McDonald's, but they, they say they have the, 
better chicken, fried chicken than McDonald's. I don't know if that is true, but it depends. Maybe for Filipinos, that's true. Okay, so that's for the food. Kumain ka na ba? So I hope when you go to the Philippines, you try these dishes and these food items. Next. Okay. The next phrase is manopo. Can we all say manopo? Manopo. Manopo. Manopo is a polite expression uh, said, to, said to the elderly by Filipinos. So manopo mean, manopo is, uh, can you proceed, Professor? Oh, sorry. It's a Filipino way of respecting the elders. So you, you, you take the hand of the, take the hand of the, el of uh, an elderly person, and then you put your left hand or right hand on your uh, forehead, and you say manopo. You say hmm. manopo. Manopo. Manopo, and that's uh, a way of respecting the elders in the Philippines. But uh, if you are not so old and uh, Filipinos do it to you, then that means maybe you look old. <laughs> but but uh, that's uh, a way of respecting the elders in the Philippines. So the next slide will show us the... Uh, Hold on. Will show us there a, we go. Uh, this one. So that's Manopo. I don't know if they also do it in Indonesia, but they do it in Indonesia, Bunga. Manopo. Which one? Manopo? The, the, this one, the Manopo. Do you... We Take have different ones. And put it on your, on your yeah. phone. We call it salim or salam. Oh, that's, yeah, that's the same in Indonesia. But in, in Thailand, isn't it? It's like this. In the Philippines. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, next. Okay. The next expression is pabilipo. Can we all say pabilipo? Pabilipo. Pabilipo. Pabili. Pabili is to buy. And then po is uh, a marker for a polite language in Tagalog. So if there's po, that means you are talking to an older person. So tourists in the Philippines should learn this expression because pabili po means, can I buy something? Can I buy? Uh, can you proceed, Professor? Can oh. I buy something? Bili means buy. And if you want to buy something from a store in the Philippines, you just say pabili po. Even if the the vendor is younger than you, Filipinos would, would say pabili po. And uh, what culture goes with this? Uh, can we proceed, Professor, to the next slide? Okay. So in the Philippines, we don't have a, we have big grocery stores like Walmart, like Target, uh, department stores like Target, but uh, Filipinos are in, ingenious in a sense that they created this, this uh, sort of a mini version of a grocery store that they put up in front of their houses. They call it Sari Sari Store. So this is an example of a Sari Sari Store where you don't buy in bulk or uh, wholesale, you buy in retail. So we have a retailed version for sugar, Retailed version for salt, Cigarette. retailed version for anything, a anything that you need, we have a retailed version of that. So it's pretty much, uh, it's cheaper that compared to buying from a department store here in the U USA. We also have, we also uh, uh, sell uh, e-load or electronic load like less than a dollar, you can you can pay less than a dollar. And we also have uh, retail gas, like gasoline or, yeah, gasoline. We put it on co inside Coca-Cola Coca -Cola bottles and then they display it in front of their houses. Mm -hmm. Instead of going to the gasoline station, you just buy from the Sari Sari store, especially if you have a motorcycle. Okay. So that's Pabili Po, uh, Sari Sari Store. Kantana, can we all say Kantana? I only have 10 minutes. Kantana. 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 Kantar in, in Spanish, Jordan is what? Dance. 
Is it oh, no, sing, not dance, sing. sing. I, 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 I was Can thinking about dancing, not sing. Yeah, kantana means to sing, let's sing. Okay, and uh, I don't know if you would agree. They say some of the best singers are from the Philippines. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, let us sing. Why? Because in the Filipino culture, Filipinos love karaoke. You go to each house, even if there's no celebrations, there are no celebrations, then Filipinos would, would always sing in the karaoke, in front of the karaoke machine. There are also a lot of Filipinos who are joining, who joined uh, different international competitions, like America's Got Talent. This guy here, his name is Marcelito. He's one of the finalists in the recently concluded America's Got Talent. And uh, these two guys here have Filipino blood in them. One is Enrique Iglesias. Enrique Iglesias is one-fourth Filipino. Her mother is half Filipino, half Spanish. And then uh, Bruno Mars is 50% Filipino because his mother is from the Philippines. Okay, this one is the language of love. Can we all say mahal kita? Mahal kita. Mahal kita. Mahal kita. Mahal kita. So if you love a person, you say mahal kita, and that means I love you. Mm -hmm. So this is the language of love. Mahal kita. Mahal in Indonesia is expensive, but in the Philippines, it's I love you. Mahal kita. Right. Now, uh, there are a lot of Filipino migrant workers around the world especially here in the United States. And uh, recently, the one of the hosts in, in a UK program thanked the Filipino nurses in the United Kingdom because they are, they they, they are the, one of the frontliners in that country and even here in the United States. So there are a lot of Filipino nurses and other migrant workers uh, who are... Uh, who, who go to different countries for greener pastures. Yeah. And uh, whatever they earn, they send back to their country. And it helps our economy. The, the money that these migrant workers are sending to their families in the Philippines. Hmm. Just like me, I'm now a migrant worker. Yeah. So I also send whatever I... My allowance here at NIU... I'm I'm proud to say that even that I I send three fourths of my allowance to my mother because life in the Philippines is pretty difficult and uh, mm -hmm. even if I'm here I need to to step up for my family and uh, I'm I, I I'm proud of doing it and my story is nothing compared to the stories of other Filipinos who who need to work three jobs just to make both ends meet every day. So mahal kita. They, they, it's connected to this phrase because they love Filipino migrant workers because they work with love. As According to, to others, they work with love. They work with their heart. Okay. And maraming salamat po. That, that means uh, kapun krap. In, oh. in Thailand. Maraming salamat po, Miss. Thank you very much. That's the end of my presentation. So I hope you learned something from the language, the expressions when you go to the Philippines. Use these expressions and the, the culture, the Filipino culture that, that goes with this uh, language expressions. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for listening. Okay. Question, guys. Do you have any question? Uh, how how you send them? You mentioned about the money money wise sending back. Yeah. Um, is that the 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 Philippines government uh, give the sanction how to because it's is somehow in is not gonna work for Thai people sending money back. It's yeah. about the currency exchange, but. I understanding of the the Philippines got something that you might need to share with the class too. 
I, how you send the money and things like that. Yeah, uh, through Western Union and then Western Union, like uh, you go to CBS, they have a, a booth there where you can send. Do, do the, the government limit, limit of the, because the, the, the money is, is create uh, some situation of the, what you call that um, manipulation of the currency. The, those people, in, those, in, those investors, they, they shift the currency by the shifting. So I don't know the uh, Philippines government have the, the uh, plan for that. I don't know much about the restrictions, but uh, I think the, the government is pushing for it because uh, our economy rises because of this uh, remittances coming from Filipino overseas workers. Mm. So that's one uh, backbone. It's aside from agriculture, they say the remittances are the backbone of the Philippine economy. So without the OFWs, the Philippine economy will suffer. That's one of the that's one of the worries now of the government because a lot of Filipino workers abroad were sent back to the Philippines because of the COVID-19 pandemic, especially those Filipinos from the Middle East. There are a lot of Filipinos in the Middle East as well. Mm. And uh, it would be hard for the government to create more jobs for this jobless Filipino. What, one thing that you didn't mention is about the volcanic eruption. Oh, uh, yeah. So... Can you speak quickly about the, the geographically about the volcanic eruption? Oh, we have uh, 50 active volcanoes spread all throughout the, the, the Philippines. And uh, this, there are dormant and there are active volcanoes, but 50 active volcanoes. So every, every day, uh, the, the Philippine Volcanology and Seismology Department would record uh, ground shaking activities the the least uh, destructive to the most destructive and then last january uh one of the active volcanoes in the philippines called mount taal erupted and that caused a lot of damage to the air to the uh, surrounding areas so they relocated a lot of filipinos and uh, uh fortunately it's the the volcanic activity already stopped yeah, but in in our in our play in my province, there's a vol an active volcano as well. It's called uh, Mount Pinatubo, and it's just an hour away from our house. So if that erupts, our area will be completely washed away by by the lahar flow and the the other volcanic matter material from the volcano. Yeah, but uh. It's it's like very, it's not considered common, but like Filipinos are already used to it, like typhoons. Yeah, you guys have a tough... Um, yeah, because... But you still smile. That's, that, that's what I learned from you. Uh, that's how they say, mabuhay, long live. Mabuhay, yeah. Mabuhay. Life goes on, whatever happens. It's reminding me of the Hawaii, Hawaii life too. Uh, I stay uh, stationed in Hawaii five years. And we got the earthquake and people like keep helping each other you know the it's about uh, uh you know the island life mm -hmm. but here the mm -hmm. mainland life people just uh, close the door live inside the house and i don't even know who lives next door to me mm -hmm. but uh most likely uh we stay inside the winter is really like locked locked down actually lockdowns really work for the midwest life <laughs> okay stay inside just buy more stuff but it's going to be frustrated uh, for the, you know, open area and uh, the island life like that. We party all the time. Mm -hmm. oh, so it's really hard for Asians, this, this uh, lockdown, because you don't get to socialize with others. Because, mm -hmm. uh, Asia, Asians are majority, not majority, Asians are collective. Like they want, they want to be with people. Like, like the, in the Philippines, they want to hang out with people. They are more collective than individualistic. So uh, this is an adjust, big adjustment for most Asians, I guess. And even others, not only Asians. Hello? Hello? 
Naisal. Yeah. I have uh, some questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your uh, presentation. Uh, and I used to uh, sing a Philippine song. What's it's, that? it's called Kaming Magmama Ni. Kaming Magmama Ni. It's a. Uh, Kaming Magmama Ni? Uh, yeah, it, it's a. Uh, uh -huh. Selling peanuts? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's is, Money it, is peanuts. Is it a. Uh, a popular song in the uh, Philippines or, or what? Uh, it's a song. Da 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 Can you sing it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did you learn that? Uh, I learned it uh, in my high school. Awesome. I uh, was in a, in a choir and then uh, one word uh, that's pretty tricky. So here is it. Uh, it's called Rasna Mansa Da Ja or Rasna Mansa Da Ya. Mm. Uh -huh. Interesting. Uh, I I heard about the song, but I don't know how to sing the song itself. But I know that's a street song, like when you sell money or money is a uh, peanut. When yeah. you sell it in the street, on the streets, then vendors would sing it. Oh. Kaming magmamani. Kaming magmamani means uh, we vendors of uh, peanuts. peanuts. Oh, okay. Peanuts. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, it's a very nice song. And uh, I can tell it, it definitely has some uh, Western... Uh, uh, style, I think, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> then yeah, really cool. Stuff. Okay, I I would like to um, extend longer uh, period, but if you want to leave, you guys are okay to leave without you know mm -hmm. just 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 leave individually, and then I'll I'll record and post on the YouTube of um, uh, John presentation, and I'll send to your group uh, the group email so you can finish uh, assignment number number eight. And right, um, so the good news for the grad student, you don't need to, okay, listen carefully, you don't need to do seven, eight, nine, ten assignment. You stop on number six. Good? So seven, eight, nine, ten is for the undergrad to follow it up, to make it up for the point for the, uh, the research paper. For the grad, you stop on the six. So make sure the one to six, you do the good job of the, uh, the, the assignment, all right? Mm -hmm. So continue. Um, your any question about for John? We're gonna extend more. Jusen, you close uh, Taiwan close to Philippines. Any any influence to uh, the Taiwan and Philippines uh, interaction? Yeah, there is some uh, something that's pretty similar. Like we got frequently earthquake, mm -hmm. and uh, it caused a lot of damage. Uh, in the islands and then um, which makes Taiwanese uh, have like sim similar personality with the Philippines mm -hmm. I would say yeah like, we love uh, like passion being friendly and willing to help each other out mm -hmm. yeah. yeah we love Taiwanese uh, drama drama series <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, we're very thankful to the Taiwanese government because they opened their country to the Philippines. Like we don't need to acquire a visa to go to Taiwan. So thank you, Tu Chen. <laughs> and I mean, that's not my that's not, not what I did. It just no, you represent yeah. Taiwan. <laughs> Do you ever listen to Philippines classical music? Oh, uh. There or is are, there, is there like no popular music, Philippines music? Actually, my, my proposal to Ajahn Chamni is for us to sing a one Filipino karaoke song, but uh, because we don't have enough time, I think that that won't that won't be possible. But in terms of classical music, uh, there are a lot of classical music performers in the Philippines. Unfortunately, music is not really my, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> 
I love to sing. Uh, I love listening to songs, but like music as my my uh, as a recreation or as a as my passion. I'm not really into music, honestly. So. I so is like classical music here in the United States like the same amount of people like a, not a lot of people listen to it. Would you say not a lot of people listen to classical music in the Philippines too? Yeah, def def. Uh, I I agree because it's not so popular in the Philippines. Like pop songs, Filipino pop songs are more popular songs are more uh, listened to by Filipinos than classical music. Like uh, they do concerts, but only the elite people love uh, attending to those concerts because it's it's also expensive to to attend uh, a concert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if you wanna, uh, if you wanna listen to to a Filipino singer who does a lot of classic songs and Broadway songs, if you know Leia Salonga, the voice behind uh, Princess Jasmine in A Whole New World, do you know A Whole New World? Oh, the Alan Aladdin. A new fantastic point of view. Uh, the the girl there, oh the 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 lady who's who who's behind the voice of Princess Jasmine of Aladdin, is a Filipino and she's also a a classical singer. Is that correct? Or oh, classic mm -hmm. singer, classical songs performer. Yeah. yeah, she has a very clear voice. So I think that kind of thing is like the the popular songs are more uh beloved by mm -hmm. the people. Is like a world phenomenon yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's a uh, universal i guess mm -hmm. so it, it follows that in the philippines as well they listen to more popular songs than classical songs that's why it's called popular music yeah that's why it's called <laughs> pop song yeah so i think we need to be more like thailand and uh, indonesia because our traditional music is uh, getting supplanted by uh, American music and uh, popular, popular music. So there are only few groups that are performing traditional music in the Philippines. I only know one uh, Filipino musical ensemble. It's called Kulintang, and I don't know if there are, there are other uh, musical ensembles existing in the Philippines because even in our schools they don't teach traditional music that much. Yeah, because of the it's more Americanized, I guess. It's more Americanized. But still um still in the Philippines kind of way. So mm -hmm. so it's not like hundred percent Americanized. Uh still there's some good research. And don't forget about uh, there, huge, huge research of the minority music type in Philippines. Mm -hmm. That that's gonna be something that if we do more research, uh, mm -hmm. it could be like more. But it depends on majority of the Filipino that uh, if, yeah. if you guys want to find something that unique or not. But it's not nothing, nothing like got to be. Uh, yeah, it's a hey. good mix of uh, American, Spanish, Chinese and uh, authentic Filipino culture in one. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, Philippines is like a, it's like a, it's not a melting pot, but they describe it as a, a mosaic where all cultures uh, coexist. All cultures coexist and uh, it, it's developing. It's developing, it's progressing. Yeah, we're friends to, we're friends to all like look at the history of the philippines we've been through a lot uh starting from the spaniards the the, the americans and then the the japanese so uh one uh, I'll, i would just like to share one uh negative negative quality they say of filipinos is they think inferior of others like they 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 always feel that they are never good enough, so they always say sorry. I don't know hmm. if you notice me saying sorry, sorry, sorry all the time. 
uh, and it's embedded in the culture because during the Spanish period in the Philippines, uh, they would call Filipinos as Indio. Indio means stupid. What? And, uh, what? Yeah, because I, that's uh, colonization, right? Uh, no. Like, they would call Filipinos, hey, stupid, hey, Indio. And uh, that became a mark of a, a marked quality of the Filipinos. Like, they would always say sorry because they would compare themselves to others as inferior because mm. that's what the Spanish told them. You are, you are stupid. You are inferior to us. Mm. So, uh, if you will note, if you would notice, many Filipinos would say sorry. I think I didn't do a good job, even if they did a good job. I, I think uh, that happens in a lot of countries who are always being colonized. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because that that kind of saying sorry thing is the same thing in Taiwan too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, the, the, the thing is, uh, they feel like they are never good enough. Like, even yeah, if they did a good job, they did a good job. They that's would how say, is. Sorry, I, I think I did not do a good job. But, yeah, that's, that's one negative, negative effect of uh, colonization in our country. Yeah, mm -hmm. agree. Very good, John. Uh, thank you so much. Oh, thank uh, you. Maraming salamat. How do you, maraming salamat. Maraming salamat too. Maraming salamat po. Really good. And um, I love the way that you present in a linguistic way that you bring learning the language and the culture at the same time. Yes. And then I'll, I'll be brave and please forgive me. Uh, next session, I'm going to talk about uh, the Philippine music. And please um, yeah, uh, pause, stop whatever you want me to. and. I'm sure you know more much you know much more about the Philippines than I am. So oh, no, I no. am confident that you are uh you are uh that you can you can deliver the the presentation better than I am and you know much more. You know well, more. It's am. pretty much like the two elements of the Southeast Asia, right? So the bamboo and the gong we're still carrying that mm -hmm. that elements throughout. So in the Philippines, I will go through of the mostly the bamboo and yeah. the gong shine, mm -hmm. and uh, the Spanish influence on the the string, the lute ensemble. Mm -hmm. That that's something that we we will talk about, but we're not gonna. Yeah, it's something outstanding. Uh, we will talk about that too. So we'll be quick on Philippines in the next session, mm -hmm. and um, the Q and A. We should be done before time too, and. And I will talk to uh, Bunga for the next session. She can present the Indonesia after that. Yeah. So, really good. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat po. And I'm glad that I, I clicked the slideshow accordingly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Professor, for assisting. Salam Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat. Thank you. Salamat. Okay. Bye, okay. everyone. Okay, we're going to dismiss <coughs> Kain na kayo. Kain na kayo. Kain na kayo? Eat after this. Kain <laughs> na kayo. Because you pig. haven't yet eaten. Eat after this. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Uh, I'll see, uh, you see you guys on Thursday, same time. Stay safe. Yeah.